time watching. Okay, thank you very much learners for joining the live class at this hour. So we're gonna discuss the rainbow today written by D.H. Lawrence. And the course plan is biography of the writer author D.H. Lawrence, introduction to the novel, the rainbow, and introduction to the characters, plot and settings, right? So let's begin once again. So author D.H. Lawrence regarded today as one of the most influential writers of the 20th century. He was born David Harvard Lawrence on September 11, 1885, in the small mining town of Eastwood, Nottinghamshire, England. David Harvard Lawrence was an English writer and poet. His collected works represent, among other things, an extended reflection upon the dehumanizing effects of modernity and industrialization. Lawrence's writing explores issues such as sexuality, emotional health, vitality, spontaneity, and instinct, right? So he's a realist writer and his writing represents these things already I mentioned here. Okay, early life of Lawrence. His father, Arthur John Lawrence, was a coal miner. And his mother, Lydia Lawrence, worked in the lace making industry to supplement the family income. Lawrence's mother was from a middle class family that had fallen into financial ruin, but not before she had become well educated and a great lover of literature. She instilled in young DH a love of books and a strong desire to rise above his blue collar beginnings. Lawrence's works and reputation. D.H. Lawrence is regarded as one of the most influential writers of the 20th century. He published many novels and poetry volumes during his lifetime, including Sons and Lovers and Women in Love, but is best known for his infamous Lady Chatterless Lover. Okay, these are, these are his written novels, right? Sons and Lovers, Women in Love, Lady Chatterless Lover, and also the rainbow which we are supposed to study, right? The graphic and highly sexual novel was published in Italy in 1928, but was banned due to the offensive elements in the book, right? In the United States until 1959 and in England until 1960. But after that, it was again published and read widely. Garnering fame for his novels and short stories early on in his career, Lawrence later received acclaim for his personal letters in which he detailed the range of emotions from ex exhilaration to depression to prophetic brooding. Right, so next, other works of Lawrence. He published his first play, The Daughter-in-Law. In 1912, a year later, he published his first volume of poetry, love poems, and others. So besides writing novels, he also wrote poetry, right? Later in 1913, Lawrence published his third novel, Sons and Lovers, a highly autobiographical story of a young man and aspiring artist named Paul Morrill. Okay, Paul Morel, who struggles to transcend his upbringing in a poor mining town. The novelist widely considered Lawrence's first masterpiece, as well as one of the greatest English novels of the 20th century. The Rainbow and Women in Love. Lawrence and Frieda, Frieda von Ristoffen, soon returned to England, where they married on July 13, 1914. That same year, Lawrence published a highly regarded short story collection titled as The Prussian Officer. And in 1915, he published another novel, The Rainbow, right, 1915. So, note it down, published Rainbow, which was quite sexually explicit for the time. This book was also banned, okay? 
due to sexual elements in the book. Critics harshly condemned the rainbow for its sexual content, and the book was soon banned for obscenity. Right, I think you can understand it. In 1920, he revised and published Women in Love, which he considered the second half of the rainbow. Okay, so the Women in Love is the sequence of the rainbow. Next sequence. He also edited a series of short stories that he had written during the war, which were published under the title My England and Other Stories in 1922. His last work is Lady Chatterless Lover, published in 1927. Can you see the slide that I'm changing? Take me sure. Hello. Can you see the slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Death and Legacy of Lawrence. Can you see this? Death and Legacy. Sir. Okay. Different. Lawrence died in Venice, France, on March 2, 1930, at the age of 44, only 44 he died. Relieved as a crude and pornographic writer for much of the later part of his life, Lawrence is now widely considered alongside James Joyce and Virginia Woolf as one of the great modernist English language writers. Okay, despite writing pornographic elements or novels or books. He was regarded one of the great modernist English language writers because he was realist and wrote the real thing in his novels. Lawrence himself considered his writings an attempt to challenge and expose what he saw as the constructive and oppressive cultural norms of modern Western culture. He once said, if there aren't so many lies in the world, I wouldn't write at all. Okay, so when you both of us in the PTV, the Mitta Vora, the Atom Mitta Vora Nathakto, I'll let me lick them. I mean, Jali is it a shot to leave it. But the Manushika is an offensive monument. Right. Isn't it again? One of the greatest drum modern, modernist, or modern English uh, writer, Vora is again. Introduction to the rainbow. So now we have reached to the we have reached to the novel written by D. S. Lawrence. The Rainbow is a novel by British author D. S. Lawrence, first published in 1915. It follows three generations of the Brangwen family living in Nottinghamshire, particularly focusing on the individual's struggle to grow and fulfillment within the confining structures of English social life. So we're gonna get uh, to know three generations. Okay, one is different from the other in this novel, which is being the plot, right? And the setting is Nottinghamshire, England, and the time is the Victorian era, right? Lawrence's 1920 novel, Women in Love, is a sequel to the rainbow. So now introduction to the characters appeared in the novel and also with plot and settings. Tom Brangwen, a substantial English farmer, the first generation in this book, which consists three generations. Okay, Lydia Lansky, a Polish widow from an aristocratic land owning uh, landowning family, lonely for a man's love and reduced to being a housekeeper in a vicarage. She readily accepts Tom Brangwen as a husband. Tilly, the Brangwen's cross-eyed housekeeper, a woman with a strong affection for Tom Brangwen. Anna Lansky, Lydia Lansky's daughter by her first husband. William or Will Brangwen, Tom Brangwen's nephew, a lace designed in a factory. He marries Anna Lansky, who soon comes to dominate his whole existence. Ursula Brangwen, the third generation, the oldest child of William Brangwen and Anna Lansky. She takes Anton Skrivensky as a lover, she has loved him many years, during most of which he has been absent in Africa, 
fighting in the Boer War during his absence. Ursula's one experience in love is an affair with one of her high school teachers, Miss Inger, which is like a uh, female in love with another female. So another, Anna wants too much of love and demands too. So now we're gonna get to the plot of the novel, The Rainbow, right. So plot of the story of this novel or book is uh, going to tell us the story of three generations of the Brangwen family. A dynasty of farmers and craftsmen who live in the East Midlands of England on the borders of Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire. The book spans a period of roughly 65 years from the 1840s to 1905, 1905, okay? The time setting of the novel, 1840 to 1905, the second half of the Victorian era. Sorry, for the first half of the Victorian era. Okay, so, and shows, and the three generations, it spanned the time of 65 years, right? And shows how the love relationships of the Brangwens change against the backdrop of the increasing industrialization of Britain. The first central character, Tom Brangwen, is a farmer whose experience of the world does not stretch beyond these two countries. While the last, Ursula, his granddaughter, studies at university and becomes a teacher in the progressively urbanized capitalist and industrial world. Right. So from the village people and also to the urban modernized people and also in between. So there are three generations that live and they lived three different lifestyles. So that's described in this book. So in the course of the time and in the advancement of the time, the new generation, right, is different from the old generation and updated. So there are many things which are contradictory from one generation to the other. Plot continues. The book starts with a description of the Brangwen dynasty. Dynasty like Bong Chuan then deals with how Tom Brangwen, one of several brothers, fell in love with a Polish refugee and widow, Lydia. The next part of the book deals with Lydia's daughter by her first husband, Anna, and her destructive battle rival relationship with her husband, Will, the son of one of Tom's brothers. The last and most extended part of the book, and also probably the most famous, then deals with Will and Anna's daughter, Ursula, the third generation, right? So the first generation is from Brangwen and Lydia. The second generation is Will, Brangwen, and, uh, and Anna. And the third generation is Ursula and Skrebensky, right? And a struggle to find fulfillment for her passionate, spiritual and sensual nature against the confines of the increasingly materialist and conformist society, right? The last and most extended part of the book and also probably the most famous then deals with Will and Anna's daughter Ursula and her struggle to find fulfillment for her passionate, spiritual and sensual nature against the confines of the increasingly materialist and conformist society around her. She experiences, I mean, Ursula, the third generation, experiences a same-sex relationship, which is also called lesbian relationship with a teacher, female teacher and a passionate but ultimately doomed love affair with Anton Skrebensky, a soldier, British soldier of Polish ancestry. Polish Bongshut Buddha, British soldier. At the end of the book, having failed to find her fulfillment in Skrebensky, she has a vision of a rainbow <coughs> towering over the earth, promising a new dawn for humanity. She saw in the rainbow the earth's newest 
architecture, the old brittle corruption of houses and factories swept away, the world built up in a living fabric of truth, fitting to the overarching heaven. Hold on for a second. All right, so welcome back. So she experiences the same sex relationship with a teacher and a passionate but un ultimately doomed love affair with Anthony Spittons, a British soldier of Polish ancestry at the end of the book. Having failed to find her fulfillment in Spittons, she has a vision of a rainbow towering over the arts, pro promising a new dawn for Lila. She saw in the rainbow the arts, new at architecture, the old brittle corruption of houses and factories swept away. The world built up in a living fabric of truth, fitting to the overarching heaven. Right. So already I discussed about the setting and we'll discuss about the novel, I mean the text, from chapter one to five next week, right? Chapter one to five or more than that, okay? So thank you very much today. Um, I'm gonna leave now, okay? So take care everybody. Have you got any question? Sir, I'm on the term paper, here we can debate. The term paper. Term paper, the debate, we can talk about it. Sir, I'm the 12 week for Junto class now. Yeah, but the 12 week for Junto class. This sir. Thank you. I'm going to update Jana now. She should be updated. How to act to be back to the achievement. The normal 12 week. This sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much and goodbye.